Earlier this week we got our first look at some live gameplay of Borderlands 3. And that is more than enough of an excuse for me to just jabber on about the game and the series and how there's so much good stuff in both of them. Because I am a really big Borderlands fan. I did my last livestream I did was Borderlands Enhanced. Because that came out and man it got me really missing the games a bit. Because the Borderlands franchise is pretty amazing. But before I jabber on about the actual franchise in a whole, let's focus on Borderlands 3 and the gameplay reveal and all of that good stuff. Now to start off, I want to just say that something really cool that was done at the little live show was that they had the whole dev team come out and, well, I say the whole dev team, all of the people that were there come out and just stand on stage and be like, hey, here's all the awesome people who have made this game you're about to see and gave them all a round of applause and stuff, which was quite cool, because it was obviously just a couple of the people, Randy Pitchford and... Oh, I forgot the other guy's name. It was two, like, higher-ups in the company, I suppose. Just being like, oh yeah, here's the game, we're the ones who are going to showcase it, yada yada, as is always the case. But it was cool to see them have the whole dev team come out, so you could be like, woo, these are people. And it's always nice to remember that it's people making these games. There's always so much controversy and stuff in gaming nowadays, so many angry fans at every corner of the internet. It's nice to see, hey, here's a bunch of actual people who have poured like time and effort and passion into this project to make it just an amazing and fun game. So that was really nice to see. Anyway, let's get on to talking about the actual game itself. And they showed off pretty much the very start of the game. They were just like, here's where you are at the beginning. This is what happens, yada, yada, yada. And there was obviously a bit of planning to make things look a bit better. They'd obviously rehearsed what they were going to do a little bit. But it was still them playing the game. And you got to see something that felt natural and realistic. As opposed to just a pure set piece. It wasn't a trailer, it was gameplay. Just practice gameplay. It's as if you were watching someone who'd played the game a dozen times already and was doing a fresh playthrough. It was pretty cool to see. And the first thing that really stood out and was amazing is that there's a new movement system, because the old Borderlands games, the movement was alright, but it wasn't anything great. I know I've been playing Borderlands Game of the Year Edition Enhanced recently, playing for all the DLCs for that, and the one thing I find myself doing which you can't actually do in that game is slide, because I play Apex Legends where they're sliding and mantling, it's all great, I'm used to doing that. In the old games you can't do that. In Borderlands 3, you can slide, you can mantle, advanced movement is there, it's all good. It's it's nothing revolutionary, it's becoming more of a standard in gaming nowadays, but it's pretty damn cool. Something else which we've seen before in other games is cover which degrades and disintegrates as you shoot at it. Once again, nothing amazing and revolutionary, but something that's just really nice to see. Something he didn't comment on as well was just they walked through like a little patch of grass or reeds or something at one point, and the reeds just moved. It wasn't just oh, we just walked through this and there's no clipping. No, they actually got like brushed away as you walked past. There's lots of small little details like that, which I saw in the demo, which they didn't even comment on. They were just like, oh yeah, that just happens. Not going to mention it. And it's just nice to see. It, they've obviously put a lot of attention to detail into the game, which is pretty damn cool. Now, something bigger we can take a look at is some of the new characters, because we got to see two of the characters being played, and they look pretty cool. We got to see the Siren and the Operative, Amara and, oh, I want to say Zane. Was it Zane or Zack or something? He's really annoyingly, he's the character I want to play as and I can't remember his name already. Forgive me, forgive me. I, 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 it's, they, they both look really cool. Normally with Borderlands characters, you get an action skill. This is something that defines the character and really sets them apart, especially at the start of the game. So previously you'd have like the soldiers who could throw out a turret, You'd have, like, the Sirens who might be able to phase walk, becoming invincible, or grab someone and put them in a ball of energy. For each of the characters in Borderlands 3, there's going to be three different action skills they can use. So for the Siren, we saw she could do, like, this big ground pound stomping thing. She could also hold someone up in a ball like, like Maya could in the previous game. And the other one was she kind of shot fists forwards, because she's a very punchy brawler character by the looks of it. Now, the Operative... He had a drone he could shoot up, pretty cool, 
He also had like a Digistruct version of himself who would shoot at enemies and who he could teleport and switch places with, which is freaking awesome and so damn cool. It's like the Hollow Pilot from Dynaval 2 mixed with Jack's Doppelganger skill from a pre-sequel, mixed with like Blink from Dishonored, it's ah, oh, it's so awesome. And he also had like a barrier he could put up and also pick up if need be and like charge the enemy and there's just some really cool new skills there which help to put the characters apart and make it feel more than just a basic standard shooter game. Because it is a looter shooter, that's what Borderlands is known for. But it's not like dull, just I'll go forwards, pull the trigger, pick up the loot, oh you've got a slightly better gun, it does one extra point of damage, shoot again, woo. No, it's really really cool stuff. And speaking about that, there's extra awesome guns they've added. So Borderlands, it's huge selling point when it came out, was all the different guns. Like, there's shotguns which shoot wave of energies, there's other shotguns which shoot swords which explode, there's weapons with different elemental damage, so you can, like, set someone on fire with a Malawan submachine gun, or you get Hyperion snipers which are really inaccurate until you start shooting a lot of them in Borderlands 2, that was a huge thing. And in this game, they've taken that a step further, and there's alternate fire modes. So they showed off a Vladov pistol right at the start of the game, where the standard fire rate, it's just an automatic pistol, ping 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 ping, fire lots of bullets. Very standard. You could then hold Y if you're on the console which they were, or controller which they were using, and it switched to its alternate fire mode, which meant it shot micro missiles. So five little rockets just went and just exploded instead of the standard pistol bullets. And that was just a pure basic, right at the start of the game gun. We got to see some later weapons, like there was an elemental machine gun, which could do either fire or corrosive, depending on the mode. We also saw an atlas gun, where you can fire something which tracks targets, and then just shoot literally anywhere, and the bullets will hit on those targets just straight away. There, there's so much cool stuff with the alternate fire modes. And like they actually said, this basically means each gun has two ways it can be used. So once you've got your full loadout, you've not just got like 10 guns in your inventory, you've effectively got like 20 different ways to use those guns. Because you've got the standard mode and the alternate mode for everything. And that just, that is freaking insane. Something else that the Borderlands franchise is known for, and which is being implemented even more in this game, is manufacturer effects. This was sort of a minor thing back in the original Borderlands, like SNS munitions had more ammo capacity, Vladov was faster fire rate, Jacobs was better damage, Atlas was just amazing and so on. But in Borderlands 2 they really lent into that, so Vladov was once again just a fire all the bullets, but also some weapons had like regenerating ammo or stuff like that. Then you had Malawan which was huge elemental effects, and Hyperion which got more accurate the more you fired them. But in this game, instead of it just being, oh, this one specific brand has this one very specific effect, it seems to be a little more flexible than that. So we got told in the gameplay demonstration that Hyperion shotguns have shields when you're firing them. So you hold up your Hyperion shotgun and boom, there's a little shield. That means if you want to charge in and kind of be the tank of a group, then a Hyperion shotgun might be a good thing to do, because you'll take less damage because the shield will absorb it, and you'll be able to get up close and just go boom, 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 and shoot things away. We also saw TDL guns, which are known as the disposable guns. You throw them away, and something interesting happens. In Borderlands 2, they generally exploded. In this game, they might grow legs and start shooting at enemies. They might explode into several different rockets that track down targets. They might become a giant ball of fire and energy which just will bounce around the place. There is so much cool stuff here, it is ridiculous. And that's kind of the whole amazing thing about the Borderlands franchise. There's just so much insanity added into what could be a very boring and straightforward looter shooter, but it becomes just so much fun. It's clear that people making this game were like, what's going to be fun to do, as opposed to, oh well this has to follow a very strict set of rules. No, no, no. In Borderlands, if you want a gun that's going to hunt down your target for you as you just sit back and have a Mai Tai or whatever, then that's going to happen. Now, even more stuff they showed, on the whole purpose of fun, they talked about how there's going to be lots more bosses and mini-bosses. So when you come across a boss, they have a little splash screen and it's like, Shiv, he brought a knife to a gunfight, blah 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 blah. And there were already a decent number of bosses in the previous games. 
But in this one, they're just like, yeah, we want more of these. We want lots of mini-bosses, we want lots of bosses. We want them to be cool experiences where you get to try out your skills, see how well equipped you are for the game, and just kind of have fun fighting a memorable enemy rather than just countless grunts all the time. Which is pretty sweet. It's, it's nice. It feels like bosses are kind of moving away from a lot of games. Like, I think to myself... I'm trying to think of games that have, like, set bosses. I know in Fallout 76 we've got, like, the Scorch Beast Queen and, like, Imposter Sheep Scorch and stuff like that. Sekiro obviously has a lot of bosses and From Software games do, but it used to be that pretty much every game you ran into it was like, here's the boss of each level, and now that's a lot less of a thing you'll see. But it's nice to just see more bosses, is the point I'm getting at here. And also, a part of that is there's more places than ever to explore. You can planet hop in this game, so previously in the last two games in the main series, you were stuck on Pandora. You can still go to Pandora, and that's where you start, but there's also other planets you can go to. We see a planet with Atlas and Malawan people fighting, there's like a dinosaur planet by the looks of it, and huge city planets, and tons of cool stuff. We don't really know how big the planets are going to be, like, if each planet is the size of a previous game then that would be insane, but chances are it's going to be smaller than that. Like, they're going to have multiple stages, I hope, but at the same time I'm not expecting every single planet to just be this huge game in and of its own right. They have said that the game's bigger than any of the other in the Borderlands franchise, which is good to hear, but they haven't really given any specifics about sizes other than that. We know it's bigger than Borderlands 2, which I guess is the biggest game, so that's good. Don't know how much bigger don't know how much bigger it should be, or what, so we don't know tons about that. There's also lots of returning characters and new characters and NPCs you can talk to, and there appears to be instance dialogue, so depending on which character you're playing as, they'll say a slightly different thing depending on who they are. Like, the siren's just like, when she meets Lyrilith for the first time, is like, oh, really cool to see another siren here, which obviously the operative or the soldier or whatever wouldn't say which is just a nice little small touch. It's something they did in the pre-sequel and was one of the best parts about that game, to be honest. On top of this, oh man, there is so much stuff, there's instance loot as well. So previously in Borderlands games, loot would drop, and then first person to pick it up gets it. That's just how it works. You can still have that in this game by choosing the classic setting in like the settings, or you can have it that you open up a chest and everyone gets like a version of the loot. So there's no more fighting over who's going to get the one specific legendary that dropped. You kill the boss, he drops their legendary, and then you all get that weapon. And it's something that's quite cool and stops you being loot ninja which was a thing that definitely happened in the previous games. But it's also an option. So you, if you think, oh no, I want there just to be one instance of this weapon dropping, then you can still have that. It's a setting, you can turn it on or off, perfect. So much good stuff. It's This game is basically everything that is great about Borderlands, just with more stuff and more improvements. I feel like all they did here was go, what could we make better from the previous games without getting rid of anything too much? And they did that. It was just like, okay, people love Borderlands 2, we'll take that as our base template, we'll make it bigger, we'll make it better, we'll add in some improvements, we're not going to ditch out anything. They've already said there's no microtransactions, no, like, weird modern gaming stuff that's going to happen, which is going to ruin the experience when you get into the game. It's just lots of fun stuff. If you're a fan of this franchise, then you're probably already excited about this game. Because it is just more of the stuff you've already loved. They haven't taken this down a huge new route, which a lot of game developers are doing. I know Fallout 76 and Apex Legends, they're both games which were huge departures from their franchises to differing degrees of success. This time, it's literally a developer going, Oh, Borderlands 2 was great, we're going to make the exact same type of game, just better. Which is amazing, because it's nice. It's nice to just have more of what you already know you're going to love. It makes me comfortable in pre-ordering this game, which isn't something I particularly enjoy doing. It's something I kind of have to do if I want to cover a game. But in this circumstance, I know the game's going to be good, there might be bugs on day one, that happens a lot with any game nowadays, but I still know the overall game itself is going to be something I enjoy. It's something that everyone will likely be able to enjoy to some extent, but fans of a series will utterly love. 
and I've been talking for more than enough time now. If you do want more Borderlands free content, I will obviously be making content when the game comes out, but that isn't till September. There have been a whole bunch of live streams of it recently. There's going to be stuff shown at E3 and Gamescom and GuardianCon and so many other places. Plus, I expect lots of your sub feeds will have filled up with live streams of the game already, because I think they said something like 200 people have access to the game for 90 minutes. So that's a lot of people who have been playing. There is so much gameplay out there. I'll be linking to the Borderlands official channel in the description, so you can watch all the videos they've got there. There's a full gameplay presentation, as well as trailers which are really well put together and just show off so much stuff. There is a ridiculous amount of stuff, but we have to wait till September before we actually get to play the game. Which is going to be a little bit tough, but Rage 2 is out soon, so I'll be playing that instead. And Fallout 76 still has pretty much weekly stuff for me to get on with, so, so much stuff to be happy with. Like, I am really quite happy with this year. It's going to be good for me. I've got at least three games I'll be playing. By the end of the year, I'll have three games I'll be trying to juggle between, and that's even not counting anything that gets surprise announced and just dropped on us. So, I'm pretty happy, and I hope everyone else is too. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about the game, anything in particular you want to talk about. Do join the Discord as well, I've set up a little gaming section in there to talk about various games, including a Borderlands chat specific. So if you want to come to the Discord and just talk Borderlands non-stop, feel free to do so. And that is all for now. As always, thank you very much for watching. Sarge out.